All right, in this final example, we're going to talk about services as part of AngularJS. Now, a service is really just a bundle of functionality that you want to be able to share between other script files. Uh, maybe you've got two different views that both need to talk to the same data source. You've got two different views that need to um, append the same information. Whenever you have to do something or something similar in different places in your interface, it's a, a service is what you would use to solve ha not having to duplicate that code. You don't want to have to go into four different controllers and have to write the same code again and again. And then if you have to make a change to it, you have to go to all the different controllers in order to make that change. So in this example, we're going to create a service that allows us to fetch the data. Now, we're not using any server-side code here, so uh, looking at our main controller right now, we're using the HTTP method to fetch, really, it's a static JSON file. Then with our success, we're feeding it into the scope variable, and that's what's coming back into main. We're using an ng repeat, the all data dot items, looping through it to write out all those items. On our details page, we'd want to be able to select just a single item from that data. Now, we don't have a server-side source, so what we're going to do in this example is we're going to fetch the same data twice. On the main page, we just loop through it with an ng repeat and write it all out. On the details page, we're going to write a loop in the JavaScript to find the one that matches the item ID that's been passed in, and then only write out the details for that one specific item. Okay, so here we have our HTTP method. What we're going to do is we're going to replace this call to this HTTP method with a single factory. It's a service. A factory is a type of service. So we have in our directories here, if I look over at the side, the part that I'm working on is the services one here. And inside the JavaScript folder, I've created another folder called services. So I'm going to create a new file with that, and I'm just going to call it items.js. It's going to be my service for fetching items. It'll start off with Angular module and the name of our project, and then factory. This is what we're building. And in the same way as creating a controller, we're going to give this one a name. And then the convention is, with your function, use that name combined with factory. If I can spell factory, there we go. OK, now, in the same way as we did in our um, controllers, we're going to be using HTTP here. So we're going to include that in our factory. We're going to inject that in here so that we can use it. Inside this factory, we're going to take this method, and we're going to be using that inside here. This is what we're going to be returning. So anybody who wants to call on the items.json file can use this factory to do the same thing and get the result back. Now we need to add a very at the very least, we're going to return an object with this inside of it. This is what we're going to be doing in our factory at the very least. This file will need to be included in our HTML, same way as our controllers did. So we'll go in here with a script tag. going to services items JS that's the one that we just created okay so this has now been included we have a service that we can call on if we want all right um, now one other thing that I wanted to draw attention to is we're using bootstrap if you're actually building a project with bootstrap we can or we should be including the bootstrap JS file 
Bootstrap JS file gives you extra functionality for the components that are built into it, things like carousels and so on that need JavaScript. If you include the Bootstrap JS, it means you also need to include jQuery. We don't want to do that, so I'm just going to delete that from here. That was just uh, commented out. I don't want to have to include the Bootstrap JS, but what I do want to include is the UI Bootstrap. So the guys who built Angular have created their own JavaScript file that gives us everything that we need. So script source. Now I've downloaded a copy of this. You can see in the notes that uh, I have a link to this file. So UI bootstrap dash 0.14.0.min.js. So we've added the bootstrap, bootstrap min.js for the Angular UI bootstrap. That is going to allow us to do anything that we would have done with the bootstrap components. And there's actually a website for this. The link is in the uh, Canvas page that will take you to that. And you can read through the documentation and what they've done with all of the uh, various modules. All right, so moving back to our services file, our factory, uh, what we want to do here is, beyond just returning the HTTP method, there's going to be different things that we want to do. Um, if we were actually talking to a server-side service, then we would want to be able to uh, get a list of all the items, get a list of a single item, do an update to a single item, delete a single item. There'd be a whole bunch of different methods. So what we're actually going to do is, when we return an object, we're going to list off the various methods. So maybe I'd have one called get all, and that would be a function. And inside that function would be where I would return this HTTP method. And since I'm returning that, I need to, um, if there were any parameters, I would pass them through here to be used in this function. So that's get all. If I wanted to get one, that would be a different function. Inside this function, I'd pass in the ID of the item that I wanted to return. Now, for us, because we don't really have a server-side service that we can use, I'm just going to be calling the exact same thing. In the real world, this would be a completely different method. For our simple example, I'm just showing that there can be multiple functions that you're returning. So our items factory has the HTTP method injected so it can use it. But the return, when we activate this factory, the return is going to give us an option of two different functions. So we can call these functions. They will run the HTTP method for us and return a response. So we'll save that. And then I'm going to go back into the main controller. Here we are. Now, instead of calling this directly, I want to use my factory. So I'm going to comment this out. And what I'm going to be doing is items, because that's what the name of my factory was. Items dot get all. That was my method inside the factory that was going to fetch everything. It will return the HTTP method right here. That runs and gives me the success or error function. So none of the rest of this needs to be changed at all. Just this is what we're doing instead of calling the HTTP method. One last thing that we do need to do to make this work is items. We need a reference to that. We need to know where that's coming from. So I need to inject items, which was the name of our service, into this controller, then it can run. Details. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to inject items, our factory, and then this code is going to be almost exactly the same. I'm just going to copy it and paste it to save it a couple seconds. Only difference is instead of calling get all, I'm going to call get one. That was our method. 
Let's see, code complete shows it to me, but I'll jump back in here just so we can see. Get one, and it's expecting an ID to be passed. So we're going to pass in scope item ID or route params item ID. Either one of those would work. There we go. So that's being passed in. That's going off to the HTTP method. If we were using a real server-side service, it would return just the one, but we don't have it. So now I've got this response data. That's going to be all of this information, right? So that's the full response, all the JSON, all the items. I want just the array of items. So I'm going to come up with my own variable called items, and that's going to be equal to response.data.items. That's what's inside this object. That is the array that's inside the object. So now what I need to do for this to work properly is I have to loop through the array and find the one ID that matches scope item ID or route params, either one. These are the same numbers, so I'm going to create a loop through items. For each lets us run a function on each item inside. There we go. The for each method allows us to run a function on each item inside the items array. And we can put in a variable here. I'm just going to use i. This variable represents each of the items in turn. So it's going to be item number 0, then item number 1, then item number 2 inside the JSON data. Now I want to check if the item that I'm currently looking at, its ID property, is the same as routeprams.id or scope.itemid. I found a match. And if I found a match, that is going to be the item that I want to save. I need to have something that I can pass back to the HTML something HTML can use to render, that's our scope object. So scope dot item, that's going to be an object. And in here, we're going to find out exactly which one it is. So scope dot item equals i. There we go. That is the one item where the ID matches what was in the query string parameter or up in the URL, that parameter that we're getting from the row params, whatever that number is, this is the item that has that number. Now I've got something called item. From item, I can get the name, the price, the description, the ID, all those parameters. OK, back into our details HTML. Inside here, I'm going to be able to say item.id in here item dot description in here item dot price so item ID and actually instead of ID let's use name that's much better there we go all right back into oh that's back into our details page I don't want that there we are back at the root refresh yep we're good there it is De details for item kitten. There's the description. There's the price. Thir 36 speed bike. Item 36 speed bike. Item wheel of Gouda. Now, this sounds kind of odd with um, for item. So let's go and change our HTML. Come back in here and just say details for and the item. Or maybe even better, we'll just say just the name. There we are. Wheel of Gouda. Silly Putty. MacBook Pro. OK, and there we have it. So item is coming from our controller, which is in the scope. And it is I. I is coming from here, and it represents one 
of the objects inside the items array. So there's six of them in the array. Each one of them has an ID, a name, a price, a description. We're fetching the one where the ID matches what was inside the URL. So kitten, I click on this. Number one, that's the ID where the ID matches. This is what we get. And if we want to see the whole thing, here, we'll go back into uh, the HTML just to uh, see the whole thing visually. Use that class well with the pre tag again. And item is the whole thing, filtering it as JSON. There we are, just had to refresh. So there's number two. Here's number five, number six. All the properties are there. So that is I, which becomes item. And then we use item to pick at the individual properties and place them into the HTML. And that's an example of a service. So in a service, you create reusable functionality that you can share amongst different parts, different views of your application.